episode 163. Are these comics going to make good film and television shows? We got Wonder Woman with the introduction of Trinity. We got Avengers Assemble number two. And we have the end of Destro. Let's check it out. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Thank you so much for spending time with me as we rant about movies, comic books, and television shows, as well as the occasional board game. I am your host, Frank Zenka. I'm an award-winning screenwriter, novelist, and comic book writer, as well as a filmmaker. And yes, let's talk about my comics, because just in time for Halloween, we have Lords of LA, which is my vampire mob set in 1950s Hollywood. And uh, yeah, we have Marilyn Monroe in here. We have vampire and vampire action, and we have... Uh, Wear Panthers, we have drag races, we got a whole bunch of stuff. It's pretty cool. It's got some good artwork. I do sign them. I'm putting in my order for number two right now. If you'd like any of them, let me know in the comment section and we'll talk about your address and how to get it over to you and stuff to that effect. All right. And plus, we are fully funded on Kickstarter with Myth Lords Classic Monster Card Game. Just a time for Halloween as well, where you're going to play as Frankenstein, Dracula, the creature from the deep, or the Wolfman. With art by Mark Spears, who does plenty of Marvel and DC covers, as well as Spawn and Vampirella. So the artwork alone is worth the price of admission here. You go to MythLords.net or check out the description below for the link to Kickstarter. And yeah, jump in now. We have two more weeks left. It also comes with figures like the Frankenstein monster and Dracula. So yeah, it comes with STL. So again, uh, check out the uh, myth words or the description below and, uh, and uh, help us get this thing to the next stretch goal where we can unlock the Wicked Witch. And then we also have a Dark Oz expansion. Pretty cool. All right, so let's jump into A Wonder Woman by Tom King. And uh, I... I watch Rock and Robbie Billups too. If you haven't watched his show, he does a thing like the night before the, the comics come out because he gets to read them. I think he has a shop, so the stuff comes to him early. And he's like, "This is the best Wonder Woman I have ever read." Now I'm like, "Really, Greg Rucka and all those guys that have written before George Perez? It's all these people that have written before you think Tom King?" is better. So I'm like, I have to read this thing. Uh, if he thought this was the best Wonder Woman he's ever read, because I'm a big fan of Wonder Woman. Uh, I have too much Wonder Woman shit in my house. Uh, but yeah, so I picked it up going, Tom King doesn't even understand the character. How can it be good? So we had the stuff with the Sovereign that he captured her. He had her in captivity. She was eating rats. I don't know what the hell was going on. None of it even transcribed to Wonder Woman and then he totally forgot about the whole thing he set up in the beginning where the Amazons were getting ousted from the United States because one of them killed a whole bunch of guys in a bar we never even finished that storyline and she was fighting against the US military which is how she got involved with the sovereign guy who technically runs the US whatever and we keep seeing her daughter at the end but we know that she never really got pregnant or anything to that effect. So everybody's like wondering how the, she even had a daughter. We will always see is the daughter grown up at this point. And she's annoying as far as I'm concerned. I don't know how she would have been. But again, he doesn't understand Wonder Woman. So he doesn't understand how Wonder Woman could be a mother. And that her daughter would not turn out like a brat. And I, I'm, I'm, the only reason I'm still collecting this is because the artwork is great. Really, the guy does does the art in here. Uh, uh, Saint Pierre uh, is really really good. So yes, yeah, so then we dropped off into the other absolute power thing. So he had to throw two ep issues in for absolute power, which he forgot everything at that point that she was captured. Everything everything just kind of disappeared. And then we jumped back into the sovereign thing, and I really don't even freaking care. I mean, again, the artwork is good, or I I really have to drop this thing. So she takes all her clothes off and she gets, not all her clothes, but a bunch of it, and just leaves the bracelet and the lasso on the ground so anybody can take it. That's great. Like I said, he doesn't really understand. 
So we switch back to a little late, a little earlier, and bam, we have uh, Steve Trevor just die. Not heroically, not nothing. He just dies. And then we have Dr. Psycho here where he's telling him stuff about Wonder Woman. They're just talking. And then she just dives underwater. So it's going back and forth in time between what she's doing and Trevor's death. So he gets, you know, a big funeral for a veteran. I don't even know what's going on there. So uh, I guess that was uh, someone, one of Steve Trevor's family members. I don't really know. But he, she had, he had gotten the flag from being a veteran and was given to her. But Wonder Woman stole it from his, her family. Didn't ask for it, nothing like she would do. She would just go there, do you mind if I have it? Uh, and she probably would have given it to him. No, she stole it. And then she's curled up in a fetal position with the, the thing crying. Anybody who's a Wonder Woman fan, are you, are you feeling this? Are you feeling any of this? And then there's this whole thread thing going on. I really don't care. And then we're talking about the gun that will ki kill Steve Trevor. So again, we're going back in time, forward in time, etc. Uh, they're in church together. I don't know. They're on a trip. I don't know what's going on. And then he floats up in the water, his dead body. I'm, I'm going to skip through this very quickly because it's, it's just bad. And nobody can find her, so we. She tells Bruce and Clark that she's gonna be disappear for a while, etc. And you know, there's her villains, whatever. And and this is all being narrated by the Sovereign. So she dives deeper and deeper and deeper until she basically goes into the underworld, where she goes into Hades. That's what's happening right here. And, there, and Superman and Batman are looking for her, and uh, nobody's seen her for a while. But it doesn't seem like any of her team members really care that she's missing. Batman and Superman care, and they're questioning the other Wonder Girls. They're like, I don't know, whatever. Uh, she'll turn up. <laughs> oh, Steve Trevor died. She's having a hissy fit over this. Okay. <laughs> I'll buy her two buy ice cream when you find her. <laughs> You know, so she's curled up in the cave again with the stolen flag. I don't know, man. And then we have this whole thing about the thread where she has, she took a piece of her hair uh, as part of the thread, and I, I really don't know. So anyway, she turns up in Hades, and Steve has now killed uh, Charon. Charon, I think, yes. And it took me a second. But anyway, that's his bones on the ground. He offers her the cloak of Charon, because he beat him up. <laughs> That's so funny, Dove King! It's funny. I forgot to laugh. So they're all talking and flirting, and I'm going to miss you, and blah, 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 and I'm going to cry. Tom King writes so many crying scenes for Wonder Woman, it's crazy. They're crying and they're kissing. Like the last couple of issues, they're constantly kissing. I, I really, this is not Wonder Woman. I... I, I gotta stop. I gotta stop collecting this one. It's just awful. Just God. I can't imagine how Robbie Billups thought this was good. I, I'm puking all over it. I just all over it. So anyway, she goes back to Paradise Island and we get to see the stuff after absolute power. And she takes, I guess, the two follicles of hair, a hair from him and a hair from her, and puts them together and they start glowing. And she creates clay, and she asks her mother for help to create the child. And that's the end. Trash. Absolute trash. Uh, so, I, yeah, I I'm, I'm think I'm going to drop it because I have now the first appearance of Trinity. If that's ever worth a dime. Uh, but I, uh, I'm done. I'm done. It's, uh, it's just bad. I, they are, I, I really wish they can find... It, Wonder Woman's been bad for like over like a decade now. Because we had Mariko Tamaki, who is an awful, awful writer. I don't care what anybody says. She's probably one of the worst authors in existence. Uh, she destroyed uh, Detective Comics. I mean, that thing dropped so far down it was crazy. 
She's a slice of life person. She's not a superhero person. So she was on it originally. And then you had the other two, uh, husband wife team or whatever, that, that was on it. And that was awful. I keep trying to collect Wonder Woman. And now you had Tom King on it. And he, he keeps inserting bullshit in it. It's just... So I'm done. I got We gotta have somebody else in here, man. We gotta have somebody go out well, on Wonder Woman. Then again, Batman's horrible too. Batman and Detective are both horrible. So it's like uh, I think that Superman's the only one by Joshua Williamson that's worth the shit. All right, so let's jump into. Then they wonder why they're not selling anything, and they have to do all this all-in absolute Batman shit because their regular runs aren't even selling. So the absolute stuff will sell for like the first three issues and then die. They're not really solving anything. All right, so let's jump into Avengers Assemble. I decided to pick up the second issue, even though it's by Steve Orlando, who is another really bad writer. But I keep trying to jump into Avengers. The Jed McKay one is not good either, but I'm going to stick with that one because Storm's in it for a little bit. I'll, I'll just collect it for a little bit, but I'm done with this one too. I'll just tell you that right off the bat. So this one we have... Ghost apes running around and terrorizing this town. Okay, right off the bat, we're done. <laughs> right off the bat, this is silly. And then you had Night Thrasher buy them all jackets. What? And he writes Hercules as very intelligent. I don't know about that. Because <laughs> Hercules in Marvel Comics was more of just a brute. And, you know, he's kind of misogynist and stuff like that. And that's not how he's written here at all. So they charge into action. And they realize that they're doing sign language. Because they try to fight them, and the only thing that's able to fight them is Hercules mace which is imbued by the god so it is able to hit them otherwise they're doing no damage whatsoever but anyway they realize that they're doing sign language and they're signing the name of the red ghost and they're saying that they were experimented on and things like that so here and then we jump into the serpent society who i guess is using them all as a diversion to do their own thing. And they found all these stuff in glass jars. So they they have to go into where Red Ghost is staying. So that they can... All these ghosts can move on. Because they experimented. He experimented on the go on the apes. And when they all died. They vowed to take vengeance on him. And then we have... We have to go back to Avengers Mansion. Because we need filler. <laughs> and we have a whole bunch of other people that are just hanging out at the Avengers Mansion, and one of them is uh, the chick from Power Pack, Lightspeed or whatever, and she has a conversation with uh, with Janet, uh, the Wasp, and that's probably the best part of the whole thing. <laughs> because this May storyline is just stupid. So anyway, they end up confronting uh, the Red Ghost, and, oh, that's right, Captain America makes a deal with the apes and says that he'll find them but the apes are not allowed to kill him so he's making a deal with ghosts well, now assuming they're not going to lie i don't know so we're going and we go back into the uh, avengers mansion and i guess they're fawning over these guys i don't know that are on television i don't know awful awful stuff just awful so yeah, so this is where they make the deal with the apes to go down and deal with him, but they can't kill him. Yeah, that that's, uh, I think Cap's going, yeah, I don't know if that's going to work out real well. <laughs> that they're, all, they're all going down there, and, and he's going to assume that he's not going to kill him. So instead, they scare the crap out of him, and then they all disappear. And they go collect him and put him in prison, and that's the extent of that. So, yeah. 
So yeah, no, not even a She-Hulk piece in here, and that's really that's really the only reason I bought it because I wanted to see She-Hulk do some action, and Cap, and I don't get any of it. I get stupid ghost story with apes. Yeah, I'm going to do ghost apes, man, because it's the red ghost. Get it? Because I got apes because he controls apes. <sighs> yeah, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> what the fuck? Awful. So that's drop two. So I'm, uh, Marvel and DC are actually especially Mar well, yeah, Marvel and DC are both saving me money because I'm dropping both of those titles. So, boom, done. There's $10 right there. All right, so Destro, this is the end. This is by Dan Waters. This is a continuation of the storyline from the Energon universe, which has uh, Transformers and G.I. Joe in it. And they're kind of breaking off the G.I. Joe villains. They did Duke originally. They did Scarlet, Kelly Thompson. Just awful. Just awful. I could only get the first issue. It was barely readable. I dropped it. Duke was really good. Cobra Commander was okay. Uh, and I think that I like this one better than I liked Cobra Commander. So especially, I think it got better as time went on. So Destro is having a fight with the twins, Tomax and Zeomot, because they found out about these bat robots, these soldier robots that were being created by Destro for Mars. Okay, and Mars is an acronym. I don't know what it stands for, but that's the company that he and his cousin own. It's like their family business, and it's a military weapon contracting company. They make weapons. So that's why they wanted to take this thing over when they found out there was these new weapons of these robots. And they work sometimes. <laughs> but they can't tell, they can't differentiate between friend and foe. So they'll kill each other if they have no other option. So that's the problem. So anyway, they ended up buying the company that's the family's company and they sent an assassin after Destro. So the assassin's name was uh, Chameleon or something like that. It's a female assassin. So anyway, they ta they're talking to Cobra Commander here trying to get him to come over to Mars with them and kind of drop Destro. Meanwhile, Cobra Commander has now this Energon stuff. And he's making weapons with the Energon. He was giving the Energon to Destro to augment the weapons that he was making. So they thought that he was basically exiled from the company because it was sold. And boom, he's sitting there waiting for me. He's like, hi guys, remember me? <laughs> and we get some weird stuff. With, we, I kind of like the, the reason why he's wearing the mask. But there's, the, the mask doesn't move. So I'm wondering, because there's kissing in here, and there's eating in here, and I are drinking. And I don't, how does he do that through the mask? But anyway, so all of uh, they they take the his tanks out, and they uh, immediately zap it. And I don't understand how this works. So like they like EMP it, but why is there a fire on the inside? That's confusing. But the guy basically dies from being a fire. So Destro's like, look, I'm not giving up my company. And Cobra Commander, you're going to have to take sides. And I think that, I thought that was pretty cool. And he's like, well, I bought it. Well, well that's too bad. <laughs> Thanks for the money. But then they, he ends up fighting them. And he realizes that when he hits one, that the other one feels it. Which is not a good thing. Technically, he only has to fight one. And the other one goes down by its own. <laughs> So anyway, he's, uh, I, one would have to stand off to the side, I would think. Why would, why would they try to both battle if they're both going to feel the thing? That's weird. So the Crimson Guards are not having a good day. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on fire, and they run into the weapons thing to get uh, their weapons, but the other guy is waiting for them, and basically he shoots them all. And now we have a struggle going on. The Crimson Guards, like I said, are not having a good day because I guess Chameleon's working for Destro now and she snipes the one guy. <laughs> so, again, we have the battle going on and the bat robots uh, end up showing up and <laughs> killing them all. <laughs> killing all the Crimson Guards. So, 
<laughs> and then the drones show up. Now, this is the whole thing, because the drones were the ones that attacked the auction to begin with that set this whole thing off. And you find out that it's actually an AI satellite system that's controlling this thing. So they end up firing through all of it, and Destro's like, bring it, baby, bring it. <laughs> I love Destro, man. He's awesome. So anyway, I, he pretty much defeats the uh, the twins at this point. And uh, he's like, we're going to have to work together uh, to defeat this AI thing that started this whole thing off. And that's what they decide to do. They decide to all team up together. And then we have a little bit later where he's with this woman that he was taught, who's also an arms dealer who was, was at the auction. And he says, she says, yeah, I guess you're right. And he fires a missile off into space and destroys the satellite that is controlling that AOL AI. So that's gone. But we never really, we never really get to see what happened with the drones or anything to that effect. It just disappears. So there is a little bit of jumping around here. And that's the cousin that he's running for office, which is why he was selling the, the family company. And Destro's like, yeah, you're not going to be able to do that again. And you need to be branded with the family. So he takes the hot mask and puts it on his face. And I guess it's now attached to his face forever. Whatever. And then we see this meteor come in. And the Cobra Guard says, you got to see this, Cobra Commander. You got to see this. And he sees the thing coming off. And he's like, Cybertron, what are you sending to us? So apparently this is where G.I. Joe is going to pick up uh, because there's going to be a whole new G.I. Joe title. And it's obviously going to interconnect with the Transformers, which is pretty cool. All right, so let's uh, do a recap. So Destro, uh, was I thought it was pretty decent. Again, it jumped around a little bit too much for me, but overall I thought it was decent. And no, you can't do Destro by himself. You'd have to have G.I. Joe win it. Avengers Assemble. Piece of dirt. <laughs> Piece of dirt. I guess it would go very well in with the MCU nowadays. <laughs> and Wonder Woman. Rock and Robbie, man. I don't know what you're talking about. This is a piece of shit. Piece of shit. And I'm dropping the title now. I've officially made the decision that I, I, I can't read this version of Wonder Woman any further, regardless of the art. All right, that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching all the way through. I greatly appreciate it. And yeah, I do this so people that aren't even collecting can see what Marvel, DC, and the Independents are doing in case they do pop up on a streaming service uh, or as a film. Because you know they are, because they're constantly looking for what the next thing is. All right, and also remember, go to MythLords.net and jump into our Myth Lords Classic Monsters card game where you can play as your favorite classic monster with Dracula, Frankenstein, the Creature from the Deep, and the Wolfman. And again, we have the Bride, Mr. Hyde, and that's that rhymes. And we have the Mummy, the Headless Horseman, and you fight over locations. We also have a Dark Oz expansion. Uh, anyway, go to MythLords.net. We are going to be unlocking our fifth player, the Wicked Witch. And yes, all of these figures come with the game as well. And there's the there's the creature from the deep as well. All right, so definitely check that out. Go in the description below. Uh, also, remember to give me a like and give me a subscribe if you can. I am trying to grow the channel out, so ring that bell, ding, ding, and get notified when I put up new videos. I also did a review of Smile 2 as well, because I do movies. And check out some of my other videos as well, and I'll see you on the next one. Have a great week.